speaking in public on the topic of religion. It's not uh, the sort of thing you can find many professionals doing regularly, so uh, I'm a little bit nervous, but uh, really happy to be here. I want to echo everything Bruce said. It's very important, I think, that as communities we expose ourselves to the beliefs of others, challenge our ideas. So whether you're here to support me or you're one of those challenging yourselves, uh, very good of you to come. Very happy to be here. As we said, uh, I was raised in a really religiously lax household in Terrace. Uh, never encouraged to go to church or pray, but it was loosely a uh, Christian belief in God at all. Uh, I became interested in the topic of religion around the time I was uh, working at McDonald's at about 15. Uh, I've actually never told a soul this before, but uh, it was around that time a co-worker of mine he was really into these uh, these videos circulating uh, by a notorious creationist. Some of you might have heard of his name is Ken Holden. And uh, I I was interested in the topic of religion, but I was kind of embarrassed to be interested. I actually waited until my brother left for his baseball games. My parents wanted to cheer him on just so I could watch these in private and, and analyze them. And I uh, I found I could refute about half of what he said off the top of my head. And I was still so I wasn't satisfied by the rest of it. I wondered what uh, what made people believe this sort of thing. And uh, it snowballed from there. I've got many religious friends today, and it's just more and more over the years. A lot of them are here. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, yeah, that's what got the ball rolling. So uh, I guess I should start by talking a little bit about what atheism actually is. I mean, it's a very simple concept, but they've actually had people that are just so immersed in a religion themselves that they really had to spell it out. So uh, I've had to say, well, do you believe in God? No. Do you believe in an afterlife? No. Do you believe in angels? No. Miracles? No. Heaven? No. Hell? No. Um, <laughs> it's, um, it, it, it really is a, a very simple proposition that, uh, that you don't believe in God. But, uh, and, and I'm sure you know, Catholics and Protestants and and shapes will appreciate this. There's kind of two ways of using the word. There's the uh, there's the default position that everyone's born with. Newborn babies, they have no conception of God. They are an atheist in the sense that they are not a theist. But I, of course, am trying to take it a step farther. I've actually thought about it and uh, decided positively against it. I don't just not believe it. I disbelieve it. Now, I'm kind of in the unfortunate circumstance that, that being such a simple belief, it, it's not um, it's not the kind of thing I can talk about at, at, at great length, just you know, repeating that, that basic form. So I'll talk a little bit about, about why I, I disbelieve, and a little bit, hopefully, uh, about the sorts of, of, of questions that I get asked often by my religious friends, how, how a life without God works. Um, so, uh, bearing in mind, which I wasn't actually aware that we directly told not to reference other beliefs, but as this is a, a multi-faith discussion, I've kind of tried to keep it uh, to, to broad uh, ideas that apply to everything. Uh, there's really three points to bring up uh, that, that cover all the bases. Uh, first off, the idea of the soul being separate from the physical brain. This, um, to me, looking at the, the scientific evidence that's been accumulating over the years, there really is nothing to make us think there's a soul outside of the brain. If I, well, the other day, uh, I stabbed myself in the finger with a pen. I pull my hand away, right away. Now, there's some things in that process we don't yet understand. It's very difficult to pick apart a brain and analyze it without wrecking in the process going on. But we do understand a lot about the nerve impulses firing through my arm and the muscle reflexes as a result of uh, the signals being sent through the same nerves. And there's just that process in between where presumably a, a soul would, would influence you in a way that the physical brain doesn't do alone. Now to me, to believe this, you have to assume that there's a point where, where the laws of physics are violated, where it's not just electrochemical reactions and molecules bouncing off of each other. Because if you're looking at that, that sufficiently explains that there's no reason to assume anything else. And I mean, if, if I hit you over the head, uh, I could cause memory loss, short term or long term, depending where I hit you, or 
you could black out, you could have blurred vision. Uh, we actually have computers now with some you know, very testable projects, but uh, we have the ability to attach a device to your head which can move a mouse pointer for you depending on where you want it to go without saying a word or moving muscles. It's all registering things looking directly at your brain. So we can see, to some degree, the thought process actually happening at the brain level. We can go to uh, the right medical equipment with the right radioactive chemicals injected into your body and we can see which parts of the brain are acting up. We inject you with a truth serum. We can influence your personality, all based on the physical body and the physical brain. And of course, if the brain is to credit for the mind, then there's really nothing left once the brain is gone. In terms of the, the reasons to believe in God, there are, there's two broad categories. There's the kind that gets you to believe there is a God, and there's the kind that gets you to believe there's our God. Uh, once for a God are the kind of grand scale cosmological arguments. Uh, the most obvious one being, uh, what, what caused all of this? How did it all get here? The first cause. Now, I think most people in this room, myself included, would agree that there is something that is the foundation for everything else. The fact that that foundation may exist isn't enough to declare it God in itself. Um, God is God because there is uh, an intentional plan, a, a conscious entity, uh, a mind at work. And if you don't have that, whatever conclusion is eventually come to is a naturalistic one, essentially. Now, given that, Stephen Hawking released a book. Uh, it's got a lot of press just in the last week. It's called The Grand Design. I haven't read it yet. My copy's in the mail. But in it, he proposes that God is unnecessary and says specifically that given the foundation based on the laws of, of quantum physics and gravity, big bangs, big bang-like events, can arise out of what is, what is otherwise nothing. Now, I don't pretend to understand this at, at any real level. Looking at a, a religious answer to the question, and you get something along the lines of God created everything, compare that to just an introductory textbook on cosmology, astrophysics. We, we, we can't get into the details, but the point I try to make is that this is the sort of answer we're looking for. It's something that digs deeper and deeper to the foundations of what we've understood about the universe, and based on something very simple, we can build up to the more and more complex, along the lines of what we've learned through evolution, a very simple process. Things change over time. The ones that succeed get to propagate and expand. That simple process has allowed us to be here. Given that, that's the kind of solution we're looking for. Now, it goes a little farther than that, though from just the first cause to uh, what's called the fine-tuning argument. The idea that uh, there's really something to explain here because it's not just that there's something, it's something that works incredibly well. The Earth is the right distance from the sun, it's tilted at the right angle to have our seasonal varieties, it's got the right concentrations of water and oxygen and carbon, it uh, is in a solar system with the right amount of heat, not too much radiation, the gravitational force has allowed stars to form, and the Big Bang hasn't collapsed in on itself. We've had time to develop. And uh, to this, I have to say that any concern, which it, it is a perfectly valid concern, there's something to explain here. But to say that the uh, things are too good to be true, and things are too finely tuned, and then propose that God that is presumably perfectly tuned, it doesn't solve anything. Now, we don't know for sure what the answer is. We've only known this is a question worth considering for the last 50 years or so. But uh, based on something like Stephen Hawking's proposition, if it is true that Big Bangs can form spontaneously, there's no reason to think this is the only one. And there are many reasons to believe that the laws of physics can vary in each circumstance. Now, we know there's about 100 billion galaxies out there. Uh, 100 billion galaxies out there, about 100 billion stars in the average galaxy, many planets among each of those stars. So the questions that concern things like the, the good circumstances of the Earth, it, it's easily explained. It's called the anthropic principle that uh, we 